I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Margie Singleton. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? Well, I'm I'm doing fairly well. I'm, I'm you know what, Angel? I got up this morning and that made it a wonderful day. I totally agree. Because when you agree. get up, that means you're not under the ground. <laughs> I totally <laughs> agree. I totally agree. Well, it's a great pleasure yeah. to connect with you. What part of the world are you in right now? I am in Hendersonville, Tennessee, which is a suburb of Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. I have a good USA. friend from there. Ooh, I have a good friend oh. from there. Aaron Walker. Do you know him by chance? No, I'm sorry. I don't know him. Is okay. he in the music business? Oh, no. He's definitely not in the music business. <laughs> but he is okay. in Hendersonville. Yeah, Aaron Walker. In Hendersonville. Yeah, he is. What, where are you? I'm in Trinidad. Way? Trinidad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that we're just joining two parts of the world, aren't we? Well, it's so good for you to call me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Like I got to get to hear some of your music. I mean, well, okay. Let me ask this then. With in two parts of the world, which of your talents do you think is responsible for us connecting? Uh well, which of my talents? Yeah. Is responsible for us connecting? Yeah. I think I think my singing and songwriting ability, and having been in the music business for many years. Uh, and uh, I don't know who brought you to my, my me to your attention, but whoever it was, I'm grateful. Michael Stover. Yes, Michael. <laughs> yes, right. My yeah. buddy, and I believe he's in Pennsylvania. Yeah, he told me that there's an 85 year old young woman that I need to speak to. <laughs> 85 year old yeah. I'm gonna kill him he made me three years older than I am oh my gosh well, I'm 82 but you know what Angel that doesn't matter because once you're in your 80s it might it might as well be 82 or 85 or 88 <laughs> you know it don't matter uh, it, but, yeah tell us about your singing career my friend and what you've accomplished well I have uh, been in the music business. I started out on the Louisiana Hayride in Shreveport, Louisiana, when I was uh, a teenager. Uh, I've been writing songs and recording all this time. I have had songs recorded by other people like uh, Tammy Wynette, uh, Kenny Rogers, Leon Ashley, Marty Robin. Hmm. Uh, do you know uh, Brooke Benton? Yes. I wrote. I wrote. He he recorded three of my songs back in the 60s. One you might remember called Lie to Me. Yeah, you wrote that? <laughs> yes, I did. Wow. wow. And I just, by the way, had an interview with uh, uh, a fellow in South Africa who was, uh, Brooke Benton was his idol. He, had, he just loved him and his music. And he had heard, that's the first time he heard of me, Margie Singleton, was through... Brooke Benton's album of Lie to Me. Hmm. And he had been trying to get in touch with me all that time. And he called me from South Africa and did an interview the other night, which was quite enjoyable. Isn't that something? So who did you learn that skill from, the songwriting skill? God, hmm. my Lord Jesus. You know, I, I, I owe him everything. He, he uh, All I am today, uh, my reason for being here is through him, you know? Hmm. So uh, that that is I owe everything to the Lord. Hmm. Well, you know, there's a song you wrote that is close to my heart because my last name is Jones. Can you guess which song that is? Your last name is what? Jones. J U N E. J O N E S. Jones. Oh, <laughs> George Jones. <laughs> okay. And Joe Jones. There we well, your go. accent and my accent. I'm sorry. I have to ask you how it's to okay. spell stuff. So it's okay. You might have to ask me. So, uh, George Jones, I had the. Which is your favorite? Well, keeping up with George? the Joneses, right? <laughs> oh. Well, now that was uh, that was me and Farron Young. Mm. 
you know, Farron Young and Margie Singleton had the hit record on Keeping Up With The Joneses. Yeah, yeah. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff, Margie. So you've been doing this for a bit. Why will you continue to sing and write? Because um, my husband, Leon Ashley, and I uh, were in the business together. He was a radio station owner when we met, and he only sang for uh, his enjoyment and he decided that uh, if I wanted to be in the business he would sell the radio stations and, and come in the business with me huh. so that's what we did and he um, formed a, a record label Ashley Record and he recorded a song called Laura What's He Got That I Ain't Got and it was a number one record for many weeks in all the trade magazines and people like Kenny Rogers, Theron Young, I mean, uh, 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 Brooke Benton even recorded it. Uh, a lot of people recorded the song, and we just made it our business. And uh, he passed away four years ago, hmm. and uh, I almost died with him. I didn't think I could ever go on stage again without him and do a concert. And uh, as I say, I owe it all to God for bringing me back. He started giving me songs. I wrote songs and recorded them, had the voice to sing them again. And um, I just, uh, I, my music, it's what keeps me alive. And I just thank God that I can have the ability still to, to sing and perform and, and write my song. That's what keeps me living. Hmm. Well, I'm glad that I do have this opportunity to have this conversation with you. Where's the best place for people to hear your music, Margie? Well, they can hear it on on uh, on YouTube, on iTunes. Uh, my my uh, personal website is margiesingletonmusic.com. They can uh, get in touch with me there, and I will have if if they want to download anything, they can download it on iTunes, and uh, uh, if they want to order the physical CDs, they can get in touch with me at Margie Singleton at margiesingletonmusic.com. Uh, I have the new the new new video. I guess Michael Stover told you about. Yeah. Uh, called Jesus is my pusher. Did he send that to you? Yeah, I did listen to it as well. Intriguing song. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's yeah. quite different, isn't it? It is, it is. It, well, you know, drugs and, and and that type of thing is so prevalent and it just has been through all the ages. Like that song was written, most of it was written, I had it out 50 years ago. Wow. And I... I wrote a new verse. That last verse on it is new, and I just did a new recording of it, and um, that's and we did the video on it. And I think it's just uh, it was prevalent back in that day and now, just mm. more so. I love it. Well, tell me one other thing that you find yourself doing uh, or that you have done consistently over the last three years. One thing I've done consistently over the last three years? Yeah. Uh, well, I have, um, my church is very important to me. I, I do everything I can at my church, uh, performing, and and I do, I am doing shows. I've been doing shows uh performing around in all the areas this week i'm uh, actually thursday and friday i have two what we call writers w-r-i-t-e-r-s songwriter rounds that's where three or four songwriters get together and they they go around it's like musical chairs if you ever did that as a game right. we each sing a song we wrote one that other people recorded of our songs or one that we had a hit on or so i have i have two of those this week and thursday and friday night and um looking forward to that to be performing some of my new material i've just finished a new 
country album and a new gospel album that I will have out after the first of the year. But right now we're we're focusing on the the video Jesus is my pusher, and folks can see that on on uh, on uh, uh, YouTube. It's it's there in my gospel album that I, I released last year is uh, called uh, On the Other Side of Life. Hmm. You've not stopped, haven't you? Well, I did for two years, Angel, and uh, I it was either die or or get my music going again. And <clears throat> like I say, God has been good to me. And my my fans have been good to me. And you know what? The internet and, and all this, the Facebook and, and all was so strange to me. And if you look on, on, <laughs> on YouTube, you'll see a video of me called Lost in Cyberspace. Hmm. I'll definitely check that out. Look at it. It's funny. I wrote it about... Uh, about my being uh, not educated in the in the uh, computer world, right. should I say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not too good on these computers, so I thought it would be good for this a little old lady having uh, trying to work the the phone and and all the things she came up against. You know, you have to see it to 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 know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but it's called Lost in Cyberspace. And my new gospel video is Jesus is my pusher. And I appreciate your listeners and, and you for, for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. You're welcome. It's daydreaming about the good old days. Well, it's been, it's, it's definitely been a pleasure, but let's have some fun now, right? And let me, let's switch gears. Um, let me now invite you, Margie, into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, <laughs> warm, blue Caribbean water. Margie. Oh, I, would I like, wish I was there. <laughs> I would like to know. Let me close my eyes. <laughs> Please do tell me, what is your earliest childhood memory? My earliest childhood memory? Yeah. Whew. I guess I remember when when uh the World War Two was oh uh, had ended and uh we uh, were I remember asking my dad, I think I was only six years old and um I didn't know what it what it was all about, you know, all the fighting and we used to see the, the uh soldiers come on maneuvers down in our country town of Cushata, Louisiana. And uh, they used to give us out uh, uh, candy and stuff when they would come by, you know. And uh, I thought it was a fun and game, but it was war, hmm. you know. A little girl looking at it that way. But I, I guess that when the, when the World War ended was my was my earliest memory of a good thing happening that the war was over. I had I had uh, four brothers in service and. They were coming home alive, and that was that made me happy. So it's intriguing, right? You're six, you're getting candy, the war is over. Why do you think this particular memory is so clear? I don't know. That's just what popped in my head when you asked me that. Okay, all right. Well, can I offer, <laughs> can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Okay. I love the fact that you explained and expressed that in life, it's war that there are the mm -hmm. good times yes uh like the candy mm -hmm. right but that mm -hmm. comes at a cost and it comes at and it mm -hmm. is a war right you have to be intentional about what you're fighting for mm -hmm. and as hard as it is as painful as it can be it's intriguing to see that as a child you saw the value and you stood there right you you mm -hmm. you looked at it and now, mm -hmm. I mean, just two years ago, you decided to fight. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you did. Well, that's a great interpretation. Yes, I did. For two years after Leon, my husband, passed away, I thought, I can't live without him. We were married for 48 years. We sang together. 
Jackie used to say on stage, we ate together, we slept together, we traveled together, we sang together. We did everything together for 24-7 for 48 years. And I didn't think I could go on, but you know you can if you have the will to stand up and fight. And, yeah, that's a good interpretation of that. You're mm. very, you have a very deep thought there, boy. Right. Well, it came Young from man. a very deep woman. Uh, <laughs> so, but please do tell me, if we fast forward on this time machine to when you were 12 years old, from when you were six, right? What was your favorite song at that age? Mm. I'm taking you back here. Yeah, you are. You know what? Let me tell you. I won't tell you that. I'm going to tell you what. When you say 12 years old, go on up a year. All right. 13 is cool. To when I was 13. <laughs> right. When I was 13 years old, Angel, I married. I got married to my boyfriend across the street, Shelby Singleton. Wow. I was 13 years old, and on when I was 14 and a half, I had my first son. I was a mother at 14. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I, I grew up fast in those days, you did. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, that marriage ended after 15 years, but it gave me two wonderful sons. Mm-hmm. And without them, I, I would have no reason to go on, you know, now. But uh, then uh, God is also good. He didn't leave me alone because Leon Ashley came into my life. Uh, the next year after that, and we were together for 48 years. So uh, I thought I'd give you that little bit of, uh, that's awful young for girls to marry, and I would not suggest that they do, but I was was never a child. I grew up fast and uh, uh, just grew up fast, you know? Yeah. So do you remember a song in the midst of all of that? Let me think just a minute. You know, you're talking to an 84-year, 82-year-old uh, brain. Almost, you, you almost, almost did what Michael gave you, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to talk to Michael. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, I know. It's such a pretty world today. Look at the sunshine. Uh, Wynn Stewart had a song out called it's such a pretty world today, and I it's and and I recorded that song years later. <laughs> and and that was one of my favorite songs back then. Wow, it's amazing how things connect, though, right? Even like with the earliest childhood memory, when you're getting the candy from your brother. Uh, returning from mm-hmm. World War Two, right? And you're seeing in the yeah. midst of it all, you're seeing that it's a beautiful sunshine day, isn't it? Yep, it is. It's a miracle, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. It <laughs> is. It's a miracle that I'm still here. I've been to the, I've been to the chiropractor all day today, off and on, trying to get my neck adjusted because I have a pinched nerve and a slip disc and all that good stuff that happens to you when you get older. <laughs> and um, and so I'm I'm trying to find a pretty world today. I tell you, because yeah. I've been in a lot of pain, but. You have made my made my day come hey. to an uh, an end quite nicely, and I appreciate it. I appreciate that too. We brought the Caribbean sun all your way, right? The Caribbean sun is right in Tennessee tonight. Um, Absolutely. Well, my friend, we have now arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's going to be yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly here, Margie. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Margie, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? You know, I just had a little great grandson and I can't answer that yes or no, but I am he he's going to get my musical instruments, my guitars, and I'm going to teach him how to play and sing. Yes. Mm, His name it. is Graham Edward McCall. There we go. G E M. There we go. All right. So you're married, right? Uh you're widowed I'm not right married. now. You're I'm widowed. widowed. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. You said you have two children. Right. I have two sons. I have a son that's 67 years old, 
I have a son that's 62 years old. They're old as I am almost. Wow. They're going to catch up with me. <laughs> <laughs> my big question, do you believe in God? Oh, my Lord, Jess, what have we been talking about? He's my reason for living. He's the reason I'm here. Mm-hmm. I, I love the Lord. I praise God every day of my life. Yes, I couldn't live without. Well, now I couldn't even walk. I couldn't even breathe. Couldn't even breathe without my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Do you, Margie, have an inner circle of friends? I have, you mean, I have a, I have some girlfriends, some lady. Uh, Judy Bailey is my dearest friend. She is a country music singer and she's excellent. And we are sisters in Christ. Hmm. She's my friend, my girlfriend, my friend, my sister in Christ. And Linda D., who is, has been my manager for 40 something years. Linda Denny, right. her family was was very instrumental in having uh, Music City. Her father owned uh, uh, Cedarwood Publishing Company, and and he managed the Grand Ole Opry back in the day, back when Hank Williams was on there and people like that. And she has been our manager, Linda Denny. Yes, I've not answered one of those questions, yes or no. (laughs) You're having fun, (laughs) and you should. It's your right, so you do have fun. I give you all rights to have fun. Yeah, I went to the Music (laughs) City Center. That's amazing, an amazing venue, an amazing venue. All right, so we're almost at the end now. Uh, Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No, I do not. How about three hours a week? Probably maybe three hours a week. Okay. What about screen time, the phone and or the computer? Is it more than eight hours you spend on that or less than eight hours? A day? A day. Oh, I probably spend maybe three hours a day doing my business and my my. Uh, pleasurable things like Facebook <laughs> on my phone. I, I I told you I'm lost in cyberspace. I'm gonna have to look at that video. I don't do the computer too well. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, Margie, after so last year in 2016, right? I set out on this goal, and I had 1,001 conversations in three months, right? And then I did, yeah. And then Uh thereafter, I created a workbook. And the name of the workbook is called Yours. And it stands for Your Own Unique Real Self, right? Yours. And uh, my idea is that you answer questions in there that are self reflective. And then hopefully you understand your own unique real statement, which is like your mission statement, right? Uh So my question to you is, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Margie Singleton, what would you say that is? I would like for folks to, to remember me. I would like for folks to remember me by that I am honest and uh I love people, and I am. Uh, uh, I love my music. I love to share my music, and I'm grateful to God for giving me the music. And most of all, I am a Christian lady who loves the Lord with all my heart and soul. And that's ha- that's the definition I want to have to leave with my uh, my fans and my my people is is to uh, love the Lord and and treat people right. Love it. Well, my friend, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? I just want to say I appreciate you folks in the Caribbean, (laughs) not the Caribbean, (laughs) the Caribbean. And and I appreciate you, Angel Jones, for calling me and letting me talk to your people. And anytime you are in my neighborhood, you give me a holler and we'll have to go to lunch or something. I love it. Definitely. I'll hold you to that. You well, Margie Singleton, thank you, my friend, for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Angel Jones, you got it. Love it. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition 
the signs and symptoms and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.